I'm hitting record right now. Welcome to Bold Movers and Shakers. It's Alexis Ray. I'm delighted to have a firecracker with me today. People think I have a lot of energy. I look like I'm sitting still. Yes, indeed. Firecrackers, tell them who you are, what you do, and why you're so lit up. I am out to these pals are the voice coach founder of the World Voice League, a community of female speakers who are looking to impact social change. I'm a podcaster, a speaker, a single mom of four teenagers. So if you don't have energy, then I would be in a corner with a hug me jacket at some point. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And you'd make it all happen anyway. That's so inspiring. I try. I try. I don't know if it always works well, but I try. Did everybody wake up and fog a mirror today? Yeah, yeah, everybody. You're doing great. You're doing great. Stay from school and yeah. Oh, to see that that that's success right there, yo. <laughs> Still fogging a mirror. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get. I, 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 I'm gonna really push the limits here and see if I can get us up on live. It has laughed at me every time I've tried to do it lately, um, which really kind of stinks because uh, I know that that's your that's your place. Yeah, Facebook has been doing all of these amazing updates, so ah. it does what it wants some days. Ah, yes, it really, it really kind of bothered me because I was like, I'm seeing other people. Such and so was live. I'm like, really? How come I can't? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that girl. <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> so I've got the lovely Altavis here. Al Altavis? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I, I want to make sure I spell that right. I am so excited that we finally get to connect uh, from the moment I laid eyes on you and you popped off the screen. Pa -pa -pa! I was like, who's this woman? <laughs> I want to know her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rocking it on bold movers and shakers right now. And uh, geez, j just the fact that you're handling everything that you do and a mom to four teenagers. How old are they? I mean, teens, I get it, but really. So we have 15, 16, 17, and then my son will be 19 in July. E-gads, woman. E-gads. Mm -hmm. They're almost out. <laughs> I know. They tell me if I just hold on a little while longer. <laughs> God, I, I, would, I would imagine that, you know, you don't look old enough to have done all that. I don't know. Were you 10 or something when you started? But uh, you probably get carded, too, when you go I out do. with them. Yes, I do. See? See? Or I go up to the school, and they think I'm a student. <laughs> I can see that. I can totally yep. see that totally yeah that's awesome yeah so yeah you're blessed but you're also yeah. vibrant and that's what's so great about you it's just you know alive have you always been like this? Is, is this I have not and that's the funniest thing because for the longest time I went through depression I went through not smiling and laughing and it was just like you know at one point I had to take a shift and, and kind of turn the switch on in order for me to really start enjoying life. Uh, you know, I I started moving forward and loving the, the model of, I'm going to eat dessert first. And so yeah. you know, as an adult, people look at me and go, you're not going to eat food? And I, I go, I'll eat food, but I'm going to eat this dessert first. And it's usually a brownie. <laughs> That's what it usually is. Hold on. <laughs> I got you, girl. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes. yes. It is usually a brownie. I've been That's known a dance to thing, man. Dance and do it, and they'll look at me and go, So are you are you gonna eat the food too? Yeah, I got that, but this dessert is really good. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. You know what? I hear you because uh, I used to work for a company. I've been in catering for far too long and it was a, a dessert company and their motto was, life is uncertain, eat dessert first. And I was exactly. like, yeah, that'll yeah. work. Yeah, that'll work. So, but, but aside from uh, using chocolate as an upper, <laughs> what, were your, some of, what were your secrets for uh, ditching the despair? As so a, I am a victor over molestation as well as the mother of two teen girls who are victors over molestation. <sighs> I also am, um, I adopted my sister. And so my three girls are my two girls and my sister. And then my son is the oldest. And it took a lot to get through 
every bit of the story that we've been through with the homelessness and and just dealing with so many different adversities that the biggest aha for me yeah. was learning that I had a voice and if I just used it even the slightest bit that not only would there be people that heard me but there would be people that wanted to help and give me a hand up not a hand out that is brilliant that takes that takes a it takes a shift what was happening before you decided to open your mouth was it like every time you did it was like whack-a-mole or yeah, that's what it felt like it was like all hell was just breaking loose um it felt like nothing for me ever went right i was a people pleaser so i never did anything for myself i was always doing stuff for everyone else and encouraging them and pushing them and then when it came to me if things didn't go the way i wanted it to i just kind of gave up and said oh well it never goes right for me so why try oh, i know and that feeling that that was it i went through that struggle for years and then in 2015 i had a conversation with my oldest daughter about trust and it was the first time i had ever told anyone about me being molested oh wow ever and oh, so wow. i broke down in tears she cried i cried but it was that release that i needed and it kind of sparked something else as we moved forward because it was months later i asked her what was her most proud moment of me and this was after i had published a book and become a life coach and started on this journey of speaking and she said that was her most proud moment of me the moment that i told her that i had been molested as well wow because she knew how much courage that took hey eh? it meant that she wasn't alone it meant that when i was giving advice or when i was talking to her that i wasn't coming from um a a, a place of just fear or a place of you know just kind of guessing my way through but that i actually understood a lot of what she was going through. it's so true i mean it's the core of, of human nature is we want to be heard and understood hi monique thanks for joining us uh, but so often is the case that um we're afraid to even admit what we've been through but if we'll do it, you know, it's like the first person on the dance floor, you know, you open that dance yes. floor, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then everybody else is like, oh, thank you for doing that. You know, now I can speak exactly. up or now I can move, you know, freer basically in life. Mm -hmm. Thanks to your courage for doing that. Yeah, it's a it's a risk we run without knowing, you know, testing the water. I mean, you have no idea how people will respond. Exactly. So, um, so how long ago was that for you, hon? That you? Twenty fifteen. It was the other day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, the depression probably started to lift. It did. Um, I still went through some things because. What hurt for me was in when I found out my girls were molested, it was in 2009. Oh. So from 2009 to 2015, no one knew that I was kind of going through this kind of wound being reopened for me, but I still wanted to do everything that I could for them. Yeah. And because I didn't have great communication skills, I wasn't oh. asking for the help that I needed. So I was just, I, it was, it was a downward spiral it really was wow that's amazing you were able to handle that there's there is a and you may already know this but for those who don't uh there's a phenomenon that kind of happens if if one's been molested or something's happened typically when their child is that age it triggers the same or the event happens again it's so bizarre it happened to my little brother he was abducted and molested in a van and then that same age he was at his his daughter same thing happened to her not in a van but like it's a trigger this thing happens man so then you're dealing double duty wow yes indeed yes indeed and you know it's interesting when you say when you get to that point where you say I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to, this is going to be my year. Everybody has had that moment at the beginning of the year, new year, new me, or you're yeah. preparing for the next year. Sure. That was me. 
that was me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you have to go and find help, right? Because, yeah, it, it's amazing to me that a lot of people don't ask for help. But I understand being ashamed or, or whatever, you know, not knowing how to how to ask for help. Um, but it's also um, uh, where you ask for help. Because, you know, if, if you ask someone who's really not ready to hear what your story is, it can, it can be even harder, you know, it can be even more damaging. Yes, to, it can. Yeah. It most definitely can. Yeah. Um, so what it does then, I guess, since you found the help and you've, you found your voice clearly, um, bold moves all over the place. So in, right, in like no time at all, you're out there shaking and baking and making bold moves that I would really like to have the others, you know, that are listening, see that, that jump that you made from, I'm afraid to ask for anything for myself as a mom to being able to balance that out. And we'll go into your book and your, and your voice and all your work that I love. Um, but as a mom, it, you're, you, whether you want to or not, you become a role model, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's interesting because I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to move. I'm going to shake. And then December 31st, yeah. I was evicted from my home. <gasps> so, you know, the moving and shaking, <laughs> it's kind of hard to do it when you're removing all your stuff and putting it on the sidewalk. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> but we went through this process and I said, okay, January 1st, I had a decision to make. Do I take a trip that I had already planned or do I have my pity party? Because remember, that was where I was. I, you know, it never, nothing ever goes right for me. Nothing ever happens for me. It all goes to heck in a handbasket. And I said, no, I'm going to take this trip. And so I get on my first flight. First flight is great. I get to my layover and there's no group on my ticket. So I go to the booth and I let them know. And they're like, just go in with group two. I'm like, okay, not a problem. They call up group two. I'm standing in line. And they call my name over the loudspeaker. And I'm like, all right, I get back out of line. And when I go back to the booth, they hand me a brand new ticket, first class. <laughs> if that was not a clear indication to just go for it, Aww. I don't know what was. That's amazing. First class is nice too, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. I know it's the same Airbus, y'all, but the seats are much softer. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get blankets, extra snacks, all types of cool stuff. Yeah. It's <laughs> a really freaking bold move to to it, go on a trip that when all of this other stuff was up for you. Mm -hmm. It's like you're in chaos. And I think a lot of times that's what we do. When chaos is going on, we shut down. It can be very hard to hear the still small voice, you know. Exactly. Still small voice, right? And then there's all this noise, and you're like, ah! How in the heck did you discern? How did you not do something on fear? How did you move forward on faith? How did you know that not staying was the best thing? How does somebody know how to recognize that in the middle? So the, there was two things that were really important. Yeah. For one, I had to stop second-guessing myself. Because a lot of times we know where we can go. We know how far we can go. We know we can go a little bit further. We know we can go out of our comfort zone. We know it, but we second guess ourselves because we failed in the past. We second guess ourselves because something didn't go right. And now we have this great opportunity in front of us and all of those memories start coming back. Yeah. So we have to fight that. We have to battle that. And sometimes it's just taking that leap of faith. It's just taking that jump. Uh, it's so interesting. My clients call me a cliff pusher. Because oh, wow. I told them I love, I started watching on Periscope um, base jumpers. And there were two different types of people that were the, the, the jumpers. The ones that could pull their own chute and the ones that needed the instructor to pull the chute. They would have this piece that they would hold on to as the jumper jumped and it would pull the chute out. And I said, you know, it's so crazy because all of us want to jump, 
But sometimes we just need that support. So that was the other piece of it. Was I just needed support, real support that was not going to sugarcoat it, that was not going to yes, goo goo gaga me and make it all nice and pretty. No. Yep. I needed the real. I needed what was going on. If this is not what I should be doing, say something. Yeah. We need some real support. And I think sometimes we get into our comfort zone and we want support that's going to make us feel good. Well, of course we all want to feel good, it, but you're not doing somebody a favor if you don't tell them they have spinach in their teeth. Exactly. Come on. That's, exactly. That, that's, to me, that's malicious. That's not helpful. That's them being selfish and, and, and self-centered. And you don't want that. You need somebody who's so full up, as Oprah says, you know, like, I, I'm running over. I got it for everybody, you know? You know, exactly. really, you, that's what you have to have is somebody who's been there, done that already, knows the way, has even has the energy to turn back around and go, come here. Yeah, let me show you this. Okay. Yes, Don't go that direction. Try going this way. This way's a little easier. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wear my hat because I'm the adventure mentor. <laughs> that's, my, that's my brand. And um, I lead people down a trail out of the forest and into the light. I and um, I really do understand what, you know, what goobly gobblies live in the forest mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know, how we have to shake them off. That's part of the process, isn't it? Because as, uh, if, we're, if we're not full up, we, we can probably become sort of like, whatever I can get, I'll take, you know? Ooh, yes. <laughs> it, oh, you're, you're laughing like you know about that one. <laughs> yes, we get so, you know, we, um, what is it? We get... It's the, the uh, everything that's glittery and sparkly and everything glitters and it shines and we just want to take and, and be a part of everything. And so we go and we download all these books and we download all of these uh, strategies and we go and talk to all of these gurus and want to get in all these programs and, and then we're confused as heck. Yeah, because we don't know that there's that we've got enough information or that this is the right information or what the hell? When do you stop? Where's the period at the end of the sentence? And if you're not seeing results and you're like, oh, I must need more information, it's awful. It's yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. 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 And then it really leads is. to it leads to us either getting burnt out or us procrastinating. Yes, I, I heard you talk about the procrastination the other day. That was brilliant. Let's talk about that again because there's so much value in that. I was taking notes over here. I yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I you know I said that a lot of times comparison leads to procrastination. We compare ourselves mm -hmm. to what everybody else is doing and not realizing that we're only seeing part of their story, especially on social media. You're seeing the highlight reel. You're seeing the 30-second clip out of a 24-hour day. And <laughs> that 30-second clip looks amazing. And you can make you can make the 30 seconds look amazing. Yeah. And then when the camera goes off and the house is falling apart, and like you don't see all of those things. I know. Yeah. And so many people are going through it, but they make it work because when they show up, oh, they have the makeup and they they have these beautiful outfits and they have red bottoms and you know they're they're in they're in the, the Airbnb home that you think is theirs and you know they're doing all these things and you're just like not catching on that this is all for show. A lot of the stuff they're doing is for show. Yeah. And so when you come and compare yourself to somebody else, it makes you think you have to live up to their expectation or to what level they're on, but they're not really on that level. It's almost like, and, and I will tell you guys, this is like, we'll probably get in trouble for this one. <laughs> but a lot of times, the stuff you see celebrities wearing, they didn't pay for it. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. They get paid to do it sometimes. But they have to give it back a lot. Yeah. Some yeah. of them have to give it back. They get free items just so they can rep a brand to sell. <laughs> That's, sure. that's all it is, guys. It, yeah. It's it good really branding. Is. Yeah. It's, um, I slept, I, I flipped the, if I could say it, I'd be doing good. 
<laughs> Could you? I got it. Okay. I know that this was fun. I have something even more fun. I've never done this with anybody. Thank you. I'll be right back. <laughs> Wait till you see this. Oh my gosh. Say hi to your fans. <laughs> hey guys. Thank you guys for joining the conversation. Make sure that you are letting those who are on your friends list and on your groups know that we are live. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Just taking a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to come and talk to us. Come okay. and ask some questions. All right, here's what I found out. The other day, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. The other day, I was trying, I was talking to somebody, and I go, "Yeah, it's so easy to fall for the for the shiny pickle." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to say penny, and I couldn't. And I was like, yeah, it's a shiny pickle. I'm going to do videos with it because it's going to make sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is. Oh, my goodness. It is so easy to fall for it, though. <laughs> Everybody puts it like, oh, this is new and improved. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I seriously went to the store to buy pickles just to do that. And since you brought it up, I'll put it on you. <laughs> but you know what, what? That 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 kind of triggers, you know, like, oh, it's just another shiny pickle. <laughs> you know, instead of a shiny penny or so, whatever that you got to go pick up. Because <sighs> honestly, really telling your story is just like having some help to tell it, having some courage and some support to get through it. And on, on the other side of it, to market it so that you can monetize what you've productized. Exactly. And, you know. Exactly. Kind of what it boils down to. And every, a lot of times, most people are giving you the same strategy. They just package it different. Some people have a red bow. Some people have a blue bow. And that's okay. But it's how they present it. And I, I, it's interesting because, you know, Facebook did this whole change where you can't clickbait. And so if you clickbait, like you're you're gonna get like less views and all types of other stuff. Like if your title is like clickbaitish. Clickbait. Like follow, follow this regimen for you know for lighter eyes and you, you know how they do stuff to get I you. Did not to know. I'm clearly uninformed. <laughs> I missed that memo. They do all types of craziness to get you to watch a video. Well, they've it, they're going back to a model of it being about relationships and relationship building and communication and just enjoying people. And so you can't do all of that. But that was how a lot of people, that's how they got you on their email list. It's because they clickbaited you and told you that you could make, get a thousand people on your email list this weekend. And by doing this one model, download this ebook. It, it doesn't work that way. I, I'm in the I'm in the business of helping people craft their message too, and uh, the transformational part behind the informational part. And uh, no lie, girl, this morning I, I I was on a live with somebody, and there were the three of us were all messaging people, like finding your voice through all three of us. So, and we were the only ones that were on. I don't know what the deal was with that, but I went to check out this guy, right? And I'm looking at his stuff, and I and and then I went to his website, and it's like. The words have changed. Things have changed. Do you know what's new? And I'm like, I don't. Maybe I should sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love marketing. I do. I do. And I'm a promo ho. So I'm all about making it, you know, go, what? Sparkle exactly. it. Exactly. You know, let's put you out there. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, come on. I mean, it's just, we need, we, everybody needs to have like a, a, a truth serum or truth teller like a pendulum or something i don't know what it is kinesiology muscle testing i don't know is this what i need to do next is this for me mm -hmm. before you know because i've got some bills still from things that i thought i needed and i don't yeah it happens it happens, it happens often yes it's interesting I, I think i was on one website and when i got to i was going through his website and he was explaining all this stuff for this program and then at the bottom of the website is him with all of these different celebrities and i'm like so were they your clients or are you just taking pictures with celebrities? Like this looks more like you just having pictures with celebrities. <laughs> this looks more like you just went to some events and you just said, let me just put all these on the website. 
so there's actually that's like a marketing technique and um uh it is you know to look associated or to have credibility because say you put a photo next to something that you and oprah believe or me and tony robbins believe or whatever and it adds that visual like oh yes that's actually true too he's just more well known for saying it so there's an associated alignment mm -hmm. yeah, i get it but uh, yeah it can be misleading huh <laughs> and i mean it was like it it wasn't like four or five pictures it was like 15 pictures wow it was like okay this is overload yeah 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 so 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 with you know you you've come a long way baby in a short period of time mm -hmm. and uh, i i'm just curious like you you were depressed and then you expressed which is sorry bangs i need a cut so bad god <laughs> my mom said when you get famous you can wear a hat i'm like yeah because that's not obvious <laughs> I need a cut. Um, did you always have the vision? Like, was it underlying all those years? Like, I'm feeling really shitty right now. Oh, you can swear on my show. I feel really shitty right now, but uh, I have this feeling so there's something else for me. So I, my first book is titled, It's Okay to Cry. Oh. And it took me eight years to write it. Wow. Because over that eight year time, I struggled with everything from what length should I make it? And, what should be the title and everything and anything. And that was me go trying to get through all of those moments that I had went through uh -huh. and going back and rereading it. And I always tell people that, that, you know, are writing their first book, don't, not, don't edit your own book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I call, you got to get a third. You're laughing so hard. What the hell happened? <laughs> like, don't edit your Cause it was the worst experience ever. <laughs> You're <laughs> never done. It was horrible. Yeah. And you end up chopping out some really important things <laughs> day, and then leaving some stuff that just make you sound bitter. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. No, get an editor, please. Yeah. So, right. but yeah, I went through that first eight years of really struggling. And it was interesting because the first book came out March of 2016. My next book came out June of 2016. Wow. And then the following book came out in, I believe, I want to say October 2016. So three books in one year, and it took me eight years to write the first book. Mm, kind of like bamboo. All of a sudden you went, pow, pow, pow. That's, it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We just, <laughs> we just popping them on out. That's it. That's awesome. It's awesome. And, and was, it, was it because you finally said, look, this happened to me and I need to get this out? And, mm -hmm. and that's, that became your content, that became your story. Yeah. That's it. And you know what? I said to myself, I said, I'm going to give myself a crazy goal of a publishing 100 books. And I'm up to book 12 with book number 13 coming out this month. Wow. I said, if I can do three books in a year, I can probably do more. But I can get 100 books out. I really can. I know I can. Wow. I'm going to make this happen. And it's just been continuous. I have the content. I've I've been writing since middle school. Yeah. It was, that was some years ago, guys. I know it doesn't look like it. You know, she looks like a child. <laughs> yeah. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's been some years, the 90s, you know. So I've been writing since middle school. I still have poetry that I wrote back in middle school and in high school. Oh. So I have the content, just got to put it out there. Well, let's get our button gear and get it out there. Yeah. So you, you would never be a boring guest because it's like, which book do you want me to talk about? Exactly. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I got content for you. What, what, what you want to talk about? Yeah. You want to talk about the Me Too movement? What you want to talk about? What, what, let, I got you. Several different ways. Mm -hmm. Networking, business. I can talk about being the introvert. Because, yes, people don't believe it. But, yes, I am an introvert. <laughs> I get it. I get it. The Myers-Briggs. Depends on the mood. It could be yes. ENTJ or INTJ. One or the other. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. So, with that in mind, just out of curiosity, when you go to a networking event, how do you handle it? Do you have to like, here I go, I'm going in, you know? So originally, yes. Okay. Um, business cards make me itch. <laughs> I cringe. And it's because 
there was this whole idea of the 500 business card model where you would just take business cards and kind of shove them in people's faces. That's horrible. That's like a hit and run. It's hard. It's it, okay. Like I, you don't walk up to somebody and say, hey, I want your draws. Drop your draws. You don't do that. But when you go hand them a business card, <clears throat> I feel like that's what you're doing. You're yeah. just saying, hey, I want your draws. I'll be back. <laughs> <later."> <laughs> that's no. That's I a want your draws. <laughs> That's a violation. That's violation. And so I had to find my own way of networking with people. I had to find what was going to work for me. And I literally, I even wrote a book and put 25 of the, the things that I do to network and where it's not me being uh, shoving a card in your face or not just me going and telling you all of the wonderful accolades I have. No, who wants, I don't want to hear that. Let's talk about something worthwhile. And because I am that type of person, I used one of those techniques this past weekend. And because of that, mm -hmm. I have a video that is on Commons Instagram and Twitter page <laughs> from this weekend from his book mm -hmm. signing in Philadelphia. But it, it comes from me finding those little niche ways to network where I, I'm, I stand out because I'm me. I don't have to be the loudest one in the room, but I can find ways that I stand out for me. Yeah. yeah. Stand out with your brand out. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I've got my tips too and, uh, and follow-ups too that got me the brand mother of self-marketing from Mark Victor Hansen, the chicken soup for the self-marketing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it, it really is, you know, once those event doors close, uh, they're done, but you don't have to be. And it, you know, how do you stand out now in a, in a sea of exactly, exactly. That's really where it's at. Yeah. And, and then what I ended up doing was it, the first time I did it was at the new media summit. Um, the first new media summit that Steve Osher did, I went and I walked in and I almost freaked out because it was a room of 200 plus people. Yeah. <laughs> Expecting me to I rip said, a scab off and tell them about it. Oh, I got a find a way to stand out in all of this yeah. and one of the ways that I stand out is dance I love to dance <laughs> so if there's music playing I'm going to get up and dance and that was how I stood out now people looked at me and they couldn't you don't look like an introvert if you're dancing well no because I don't really have to pay y'all any attention if I'm That's dancing right. I'm paying attention to the music <laughs> That's right. That's right Give me some room. I'm doing the white girl flail too. You don't want to be around me at all. Don't try to dance with me. I'm just enjoying myself. Yeah. And so I walked up to the front of the room. I had yeah. my camera. No, I had my phone and I was live streaming it. And I got like really excited because it's music. And so I turned my camera around. And when I turn around, it's all these eyes in the room staring at me. And I'm like, okay, just look at the camera. Look at the camera. <laughs> look at the camera. But I ended up, uh, they asked me to come on stage and dance with them. I get on stage and dance. And then after lunch, when we came back, Steve Osher called me by name to come back on stage and dance. That's standing out. That's what it is. I call it brand standing and uh, Urban Dictionary approved it along with the word ogrely, which is how I look and sound in the morning. <laughs> story <laughs> but it's brand standing not grandstanding exactly. when you're genuinely authentically representing yourself and what you have to offer the world it's all about the vibe behind the action isn't it that's right yeah it really is and it's, it's much fun. more fun pardon it's much more fun it's amazing um the the somber air, air around the um uh the linkedin platform Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot more, they're finally getting to be a little bit more human. And I really enjoy the people I've met there. Yeah. They're amazing. But there's more of a somber, you know, it's, you, you, you can't show a shiny pickle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it better have some relevance to my business, bitch. <laughs> exactly. Like, you, no, that's just not. Sorry. Anything to do with resumes, if, if not, then. And you're just like, oh, it's so dry. But now they are picking up. There's more conversation. And I think a lot of the tweaks that they've done on LinkedIn have really like set a new precedence for LinkedIn where you can actually engage with people. And, and it is engagement marketing, in my humble <laughs> opinion. That's what I call it. The reason that I brought it up is because 
of the environment. Now an environment can cause us to kind of pull in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And and so then it feels like suddenly like it's a bold move where normally it isn't to to be vivacious. Exactly. It, and it stinks. You know, if, 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 if you've worn purple shoes in and suddenly you realize everybody's got black ones on, you might want to hide your shoes under your bell bottoms, right? But Pretty at the same much. time, yeah. But at the same time, if you like, you cross your leg and that big boot shows and you got purple shoes showing, somebody might actually like it. Exactly. You no, know? you got a 50 50 shot, right? You know, it, 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 I guess the hardest part for people is to be bold in who they really are. Yeah. Because and to if recognize I show you who I really them. am, what if you don't like it? That's what no. a lot of people feel. That's what a lot of people think. If I show you who I really am, what if you don't like it? Yeah. What if they don't? What if they do? Right? <laughs> oh my God, there's that. Okay. What if they actually love it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I have found is that uh, if, if we, I really thought I turned that off. I'm so sorry. Shut up. <laughs> I'm, man, technology is just laughing at me. Um, and so are you. I'm okay with that. Um, <clears throat> what we want to be able to do is uh, find the tribe that gets who we are. And at the same time, we want to differentiate ourselves. So it's a fine line. Exactly. I mean, how, how does somebody do that? Especially, you know, you, you've walked through a, a, a lot and have come out the other side, you know, Sister Mary Sunshine, and I love you. And I really respect that. Been there too. I was depressed for 40 years. Mm -hmm. and uh, really know the battle it is to find that yeah yeah and to share that and it's easy for people to look at you like they would a celebrity and go but well, you've just always been happy haven't you yeah, you know it's like, exactly <laughs> actually no it's not and it's not this way every day is it no no, no there's moments when it's not <laughs> yeah. yeah so um so how is it that you know you know you need to differentiate yourself um and and it's a it and yet you you know that there's a there's a fine line between grandstanding and brandstanding. How do you how do you help your clients figure out who they are and how to express that? So one of the things that I've always done is I start to ask them questions. What do you like? You know, I talked about how women who've gone through abuse a lot of times when they come out, they don't really know what they like. They don't know their favorite color, they don't know their favorite foods because they've been told what that, that should be for so long, what colors to wear and, and what colors. Oh no, this is the color that looks best on you, so you're gonna wear this. Yeah. And so sometimes it's as simple as them sitting down with themselves and just saying, what kind of food do I like? Yeah. I know I'm a brownie eater. I love a, a, an amazing brownie, <laughs> look, amazing brownie with nuts and ice cream. Oh. I, I, I'm good to go. But it took me a while to be comfortable in saying that that's something that I really love. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily healthy, you know, yeah. all, that, all that jazz. Yeah. But it's something that I like. Yeah. So everybody may not like it. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You find those things that you like and you move forward in those things. I like to dance something that I like. Everybody's not a dancer and it's okay. Yeah. Um, I like unicorns, so I don't have anything in front of me. Oh, I got a unicorn the other day. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Oh no, I have one of them. Oh, oh. <clears throat> my office is like full of unicorn, all types of unicorn stuff. Oh. And they call me a unicorn simply because I stand out. I don't fit into anybody's box. I don't fit into anybody's bubble. Yeah. Um, I don't look like the typical speaker. I don't act like the typical coach. So they just kind of look at me and go, you're, you're just a unicorn. It just, that's what you are. And I, I love it. So I have unicorn shirts. I have unicorn earrings. And people look at me and go, how old are you? 14. I'm 39. Just like I'm 39. And yes, I have unicorn earrings. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I'm 39. And yes, I have unicorn shirts. 
I have one that says, um, uh, yeah, just be a unicorn. It's the best thing to be. Just be a unicorn. And people will look and say, oh my goodness, I love your shirt. I went to, you know, different functions and took pictures with people in Ghostbusters costumes with my unicorn shirt on it. Because that's what I love. Yeah. Yeah. So you find those things that you love and you be okay with just walking in that and showing that off. Be okay with it. If it's your favorite color is yellow and that's the only color you want to wear, go for it. There's a woman, I think, in, I think she's in California. And her favorite color is pink and everything in her house is pink. All her clothes are pink, the walls, chairs, everything is just pink. Yeah. I would probably be nauseous. <laughs> I've been in a home like that. It was sort of a mauve because that made her look good with her colors. And I it literally felt ill. It's not everybody's color. It, the whole house was mauve pink. It, it, yeah. It's not, it's not my not thing. Everybody. Yeah. But it's her thing. So, so the, the theory then here is that it's obviously working is, is that you're finding something, you're tap, telling your client, tap back into something that brings the sparkle back to your eyes. Exactly. Remember what it is that makes you happy. Sometimes you don't even know what that is. You know, that can be a, a really, there's something buried down here. Surely I'll find it. You know, it could be a really hard thing to dig that out or to create that because, it, you know, they say life is about creating yourself, not about finding yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so all the options are, are like, you know, it's like a menu. Everything's available on the menu, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And I tell people, once you start focusing on it, you'll see it. So I have a client and for her, it was butterflies. So she would find like really pretty jewelry and really pretty shirts. And she would see all of these different things with butterflies on it. And she went on a cruise and on the cruise, it was a butterfly room. Nice. And it was nothing but butterflies all around in the walls. It was the butterfly chandelier. And she was just in, uh, she was so, you saw this huge smile on her Aww. face. Because that, it, that's what she likes. Yeah. So when you do that and you walk in that, it also becomes a statement. Um, it becomes a statement piece that you're wearing. It becomes a statement of who you are. It can become a statement of your brand. It becomes that statement that really stands out and starts the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Or the laughs. I don't know. People like yeah, or the laughs. Yeah, you know, some people, it, you know, they may always wear cowboy boots. Yes. In the summertime, that may seem a little odd. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the other things that I've noticed is that um, often <clears throat> there, there's concern about, well, if I step off the curb, see your analogy is off a cliff. I tell people to take a, a step off the curb when the traffic is clear, don't jump into traffic and um, right. you got to wait a second yeah, and, yeah, and a then, second. you know, move. And then you get to the center lane and, uh, and then the other side's coming and right. And usually somebody will stop and wave you through and they wouldn't have had to do that if you were still on the curb right so you're just moving towards what what you know that other side but just, it's action that creates that opportunity it's not the opportunity that opens the door and then says okay traffic's clear everywhere i'm going you know mm. it's literally going where the flow is huh yeah that's it yeah creating your own flow sometimes just going ahead and doing it let's go one of the biggest things that i'm about you that i'm so impressed is that you seem to have mastered that mindset, that old mindset that said, it doesn't, it's never gonna work out for me, or it never works out for me, it was something like that, right? Right. How did you do that? So that was a, that was a huge process. Part of it was it is. Me, me taking that jump. Um, I tell people, for me, it was publishing the first book because I had spent so much time pouring into it and, 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 and you know, mulling over it. And when you hold that first book in your hand, <laughs> yeah. you say, wow, I'm an author. Yeah. When, when you look on Amazon and your book is there, it's a different feeling for you. You've accomplished something. And, you know, they talk about it in the 
I think it's in the five second rule where she talks about um, when you get up in the morning and having that five seconds and counting that five seconds and going ahead and getting up out of bed instead of, you know, mulling over it and, and thinking of what the day may be. Just go ahead and get up. <laughs> get up. Yeah. And you get up, you may make your bed. That may be the first thing you accomplish that day is just making your bed. It's an accomplishment. I've seen some people's beds and I have teenagers. Trust and believe. <laughs> making your bed is an accomplishment, people. Yay. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> so you just make that first accomplishment. That second thing may be something where you go and you spend some time in meditation, or you may go and you pick out some clothes for yourself for the day. And your clothes match. Or even if they don't match, you put on clothes. That's an accomplishment. And you just have to start out small sometimes uh -huh. and work your way up. Mm -hmm. And so I got dressed today. You especially those who are going through depression. I got dressed today. I took a shower today. That's an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I reached out and I spoke to one person today. It may not have even been a long conversation, but I talked to somebody outside of my home today. Yeah. That speaks volumes. Yeah. And it, it's those little things that start to build up. It's almost like you're taking it brick by brick and you're building your own bridge. It takes baby steps to make a bold move. It it's, does. It's not a chasm that all of a sudden you jump over. It's le lily frogs, l exactly. lily pads, right? Exactly. Yeah, from one to the next. And guess what? There is no there. There's no end. <laughs> because we're creative, hey. It's always, that's a human condition. We just something. want to keep making shit. <laughs> exactly. There's always something. There's yeah, always going to be some idea, something. Is going to get made. <laughs> now you have how many books? That you're gonna, you're, your thirteenth is coming out. Yes, book number thirteen is coming out this uh, this month, June 29th. Super excited about that. Um, it's my first book anthology from my brand, and it's called A Stage of Their Own. It's literally uh, thirteen authors coming together and talking about you know what it felt like to create their own stage. You know, we talk about how they don't always give us a seat at the table. So you create your own table. You create your own seat. You stand on the table if you have to. And say, here I am. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've written emails with the subject line, so assumptive. It's like, you, him, and me, we're doing this, you know? Exactly. It's, That's right. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty ballsy, actually. But of all the books that you have out, do you have a favorite or why you might? So I would say my favorite was a uh, plug-in and that's the, the 25 tip power tip power networking tips for introverts, startups, and the success obsessed. And it was because I gave people a little more insight into who I am and what I do to make me work. Yeah. Um, because when I go to events, people are always like, you're not an introvert. You're an extrovert now. And I'm like, no, give it an hour. <laughs> you won't find me. Give it a moment. Yeah. You'll find me. My back's against the wall. One foot's out the door, yo. Right? I'll be by the pool. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't blink. And they know that and even when I go and do events, I've been known to, they look up and go, where's the unicorn and the unicorn has found a cafe and went and sat down and got a brownie and oh. it just was fine and everybody else is eating lunch together and i'm just like yeah no i just want to go over here but it's you know it was a, a real insight into what's really brought me to this point because it, it i couldn't have done it by myself I couldn't have done it with my own two hands. And no matter how hard we try, the success that we, we have access to, it comes from us being able to build communities and have support and connect with people and have conversations that leads us to the success that we're trying to gain. Yeah, yeah. And yet it's, it's uh, happiness is a head trip and uh, you know, it really is an inside job. Uh, it can, we certainly can be impacted by the, the external noise, but uh, ultimately happiness is a head trip. Uh, pack light, you know, you can leave the, the guilt and the crap from the pack, you know, from the past 
you know, and travel light because what I found is, and you'll probably agree, is that you, just as long as you set out, whatever you need will show up if you forgot to pack it. So it'll be okay. It will. Where can we get that networking book of yours for introverts? So it's an ebook. If you go to bit.ly. Hold on. Billy. Oh. That's a Billy address. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. It's so put it in the dot ly forward slash plug in my voice plug in my voice okay yeah i literally give you you know how to plug in your voice how to plug in you know your personality in in networking and people were like i, I did a training for black speakers network um which it you know it was great because i was talking to them about networking i said you know for us we can have on shoes and have a full-fledged conversation with a stranger over shoes. Oh, hey, yeah, in a second. And then I said, but men, we don't leave you out. I know what you talk about. I said, for men, it may be cufflinks. And I said, there's certain men that really love cufflinks, and that's something that their eyes are drawn to when they come into a room. Yeah. That's your, that's your end. Yeah. Where's some, some old... Spider-Man cufflinks or some <laughs> Batman cufflinks when you go to a, a networking event. And I can guarantee <clears throat> you will walk away with some interesting networking stories and some conversations and possibly some business connections that can really take you far. And it started from just you showing your personality in one small way. Can you imagine? I, do you remember the bar scene? This is a great idea. Remember the bar scene from Star Wars when there's just creatures of all kinds? I mean, everything, right? We're, we're encouraging pretty much this kind of scenario. You realize that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can go to a rave and see it too, which is freaking awesome. That's why I still go away. I do. But uh, yeah, encouraging that guy. Just it matters Show up. really who you are. And if it's not, I have a tip. I sidle up next to somebody like this and I go, so aside from the free food and food and the kind of bad hot dogs, why are you here? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> do you usually come to things like this or if you're in a long line at a bank? So aside from long lines, what else is a good idea or, or exactly. a lot of fun to you, you know? Exactly. And it's and and you can you can charm to disarm. Yeah. And 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 then you create rapport out the door. Dr. Seuss lives here, yo. <laughs> it's just, it's just a gift. I don't know. <laughs> it sure is it, good to it laugh. It makes sense, though. I mean, if you just go ahead, find that little thing, talk about whatever it is, and yeah. listen, dialogue happens so easily. You want to see dialogue, go and sit on, especially men do it a lot. If you're on an airplane yeah. and they have on a watch, and another gentleman likes the watch. I like watches too. <laughs> and they'll say, hey, where'd you get your watch? And that starts a whole conversation. And by the end of the flight, they've exchanged business cards. They got a whole business plan. <laughs> they yeah. strategized on a napkin. Like it's, this whole thing happened yeah. on a flight. Yeah. A watch. Yeah. It, it's it's life as an improv act, where improvisational acting is really, it's like whatever you present is a yes, and and you know so if you say I'm a three-headed pig I have to say okay and and roll with it and that's exactly. you know that's that's the art of life really is make rolling with what shows up but being open to what shows up is the key yes you know not that open or close-mindedness of I'm good no. how do you, you tell somebody I'll, 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 do you have a nickname I don't want to call you Belle so my nickname is Visa Visa I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you are so adorable. I just want to reach through here. And just like, <laughs> you are so adorable. I see why people tune in and check you out all the time. Your ebullient enthusiasm is genuine. And uh, yeah. So when you find somebody who's just kind of like a burrow and you're, tr you, you don't pull burrows up the hill, it, you know, it makes you tired. It pisses them off. <laughs> but if somebody presents as that, is there a good way to say, mm, I can't help you if you don't really want it, but I do want it, but they don't? <clears throat> How do you recognize that? So I had to, and my clients love me for this. I said, you know, sometimes I have to turn people away. And this stems from 
working years and years and years in retail and seeing that there are people that have um that are spending addicts and 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 you know that's that's their addiction is going and buying whatever it is that's in that particular store and sometimes being the one to say well maybe you don't have to get that one right now or, you know maybe that's not one that you need oh, um it's not always easy because you feel as though you don't really have the position to say it yeah but you do yeah. you do a lot of times we forget that people trust us a whole lot more than we trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. They really do. And so sometimes you have to tell people, I can't help you. And mm -hmm. I've told clients that, and they, they've respected me more for mm -hmm. telling them, okay, well, we have to stop here yeah. and you may need counseling. Yeah. We have to stop here and there's something that you need to get past. And once you get past that, now we can come back and work on this. As opposed to me just trying to say, well, you'll figure it out. That, see, that's, that's bold too. It's so much easier just to kind of, you know, slink away and hope nobody says anything. But mm -hmm. not really helping anybody that way. No. Yeah. And that's what I think, uh, unfortunately, in the coaching industry, that's why we have so many people who are wounded mm. by coaching programs because they... The program they were in was not really a good fit and they didn't really know how to vet the coach before getting into the program and then they had some other things that needed to really be worked on first yep but that coach was more interested in the yep. dollars and cents i just went through that i got a hell of a bill and no results mm -hmm. and it's, i'm not blaming i'm just saying that's exactly what happened yeah yeah it's really important to be able to assess and reassess yeah and reassess exactly. yeah yeah i know i've only got you for an hour and i'm looking at the clock sadly i don't want to let you go i really don't we'll have to continue this when your book comes out definitely yeah looking down the down the for someone like you what would be considered a bold move on your bucket list so the next bold move on my bucket list mm -hmm. is well, one is I want to do a TEDx talk, but the other one is I want to get on stage with Michelle Obama. Like, I want to be at the event and her and I are, like, either interviewing or talking and encouraging the crowd um, simply because I, I love her demeanor. I love her presence and I love her personality and what it is that she sees herself doing when she goes and encourages youth and young women and mm. you know healthy lifestyles and I'm like I love that I, I love that so that's a bold move for me I know from uh for the longest time because I am that introvert you we all have that celebrity that we're like oh my god <laughs> I would love to meet them, but then opportunities come up and we're like, yeah, no, no, stranger danger. <laughs> but I'm stepping more into going ahead and stepping up to those opportunities. And yeah. even with what I did this past weekend, it was stepping into those opportunities. And I think that if that opportunity shows up or even if I have to create the opportunity, I'm going to do it. That's what I'm talking about, creating it. Yeah. 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 Put it, put it out there. When I had my, uh, I really, you got an extra minute. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Oh, good. I didn't know if you were stacked up, stacked and racked girl. I got to go. <laughs> There's fans out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, being a podcaster as we both are, there's opportunities to reach out and, and invite people back in the day though it wasn't that common so it was a really unique opportunity to um to reach out and give um i focused on inspirational speakers and you know that platform there but uh social media also makes things a lot more accessible now than it's ever been which is great you know we really can align and i was hosting uh cougar talk radio no it wasn't about older women getting younger guys it was not. It, however, it uh, turned out to be a comedy show for anybody who's ever been single. I wanted to invite Steve Harvey. Like, who the hell are you? I'm some chick in Ch Charleston who brings people in. Hector, if you're still there, you remember. My, my people remember. We, 
I had a good time. It was the champagne. That was the guest. That was the topic. I'm not sure, but we had a blast, <laughs> right? All yeah. the time, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the long and short of it is that I invited Steve Harvey to call in because his book had once been number one, and I'd seen the movie, Act Like a Lady, Date Like a Man. And I just thought, well, who the hell am I? Well, who the hell aren't I? I'll do it, whatever, you know? And finally, like months later, this guy from Facebook gets back to me and he goes, oh, it's been a while. I'm sorry. I was like, oh, oh my God, it's him, right? You know? And uh, yeah. And then the next question was, so do you cougars like big black African men? And I said, oh my God, it's not him, is it? <laughs> right? So here I'm thinking social media. Wow, it rocks. Well, here's what happened. I went to the website, I'm telling you, no lie, I can't make this shit up. Went to the website to, to tell the producers, and uh, while I'm doing my do good, guys, you need to know there's some guy looking like Steve Harvey out there. Uh, there was a tab, be on the show. And, and something, that still small voice that we follow, it, it, um, I ended up being on the show. Yeah. Yeah, from this freakish loop of crazy stuff ended up being on a guest on Steve's show. So, I mean, you just never know, right? Exactly. You just have to be able to be willing to follow that destiny that's calling, huh? Yeah. yeah. If you were to give advice to somebody that's listening, that's a loaded question. Here it comes, right? I don't even have this shit planned, girl. I'm making it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What is, what is something that they can do on a daily basis or a weekly basis or maybe tomorrow or something that can, can if they're by themselves, lone wolf, introvert, probably not a lot of friends, what can they do to start feeling a little bit more? I would say, what's that one thing that you love to do? Take just, time every day and do it. Okay. So for me, for a while, it was, I would literally just dance, yeah. put some music on and just dance, dance with my kids. I would go on YouTube and try to learn some of the dance moves for them. Um, um, one of my favorite uh, choreographers is Wildebeest. He does some amazing ones, mm -hmm. him and his wife. I would go and do those and uh, I mean, just anything and anything, anything and everything, but it would be it could be salsa it could be line dancing i i would just spend some time each day i think one of the one of the things that really drains us sometimes is we do everything for everybody else but we don't do anything for ourselves mm. and so on our list we have everybody else on the list and we're not on there that's it <laughs> <laughs> no, we that's a lot. That's a lot. Because I, I, I grew up with a mom who was resentful of, if it wasn't for all you kids, I'd have a better life kind of feeling. And mm -hmm. you can't do that. You can't no. do that. You've got to fill up your own, put on the face mask first, that, all that stuff. Bravo. Absolutely bravo. Where can people get that book behind you? Speak up, because I'm yes. dying to ask that you about is, this. Um, that's a book anthology that I did with Black Speakers Network. Um, and if you go to www.speakupthebook, you can get that one. And they're actually on tour right now. So uh, I was at the location in Baltimore this past weekend. They just did California. Uh, so they're traveling all over the U.S. to the different places um, and doing live book, book tours with the different authors there and everything. So it's really, really great. Nice. That's great. I'm so glad to see you out there. You're such a bold mover and shaker and you make it look effortless. Yeah, we're going to end on that happy note. Thank you for being on Bold Movers and Shakers. And thank you guys, Ernest and Kate and DA and Hector and John and Charlotte and Elder Carmen King. I wanted to connect with you earlier today. And Kenneth and uh, uh, all your, thank you. You've just been spectacular. You know how I'm going to end this, don't you? Oh, we're doing this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you, girlfriend. Back it up, back it in. Let me begin. Back in the wind, I'll make that sustain. I'll get that back up. Try to play the role that I hope I'll act. Don't get up, it's going to be cool. I love it, I got a dance party.
partner. That's it. <laughs> Finally, I've been by myself my whole life. I'm the only one who will do that shit. <laughs> Love you, Carol. Let me just stop. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. How fun is this? Oh goodness. Let me figure out how can I get rid of that Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's done. I don't know. <laughs> oh goodness. How much fun are you? Oh, I think we're live again. Hold on. <laughs> we still are. Okay, let me see. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think that'll do it. <laughs> the other day they got to watch me pull stuff out of the fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me just stop that.